How did you cheat school? Seen at a year of high school we had to write a research paper, spent almost all year on it, was supposed to be like 10 pages or something. I goofed off and said frick it. Time comes to turn it in and I turn in one of those clear folder things with just a cover sheet in it. A week later the teacher comes to me and tells me she lost my paper and needs me to reprint it and bring it in tomorrow. I tell her no problem and go home. Next day I come in and tell her that it had been written on my mom's computer, only computer in the house, and that my mom had already deleted it. Sounded really sad and asked what I was supposed to do now. I couldn't write a new report that quick. I had spent all year on it. She says she will take my average from the other assignments we had done and that would be my grade for the paper. Walked away with a 93% on the paper. I feel like I cheated college. I graduated with lower honors. CM Lord or whatever. And it was entirely because of my major. I went in freshman year as a declared marketing major. Business school. My only natural academic ability is I can write. Business school, though, is heavy on math. And I am abysmal at math. I wasn't a great high school student, middle of the road, so I had to take a sort of lead in math class, basically pre-calc. I think I got a C, the lowest grade you could get and move on. The next year I took accounting 1, and again, barely hit the minimum. Same with accounting 2, and finance, and microeconomics, and macroeconomics, and operations management. Every year they saddled me with all these math classes. And every year I remained horrible, borderline incapable of math. Oh, but marketing classes. Bless you, you pointless, retarded major. It is the art major of the business college, and I was freaking Picasso. Write a marketing plan for an asinine product? Done. I even got good at presenting hilarious, garbage ideas, despite my low self-confidence. All you have to be able to do is cite sources that kind of poke at the point you're making. And I always found them. So even if the idea was preposterous, I could spin it. For international marketing my paper was on introducing Flintstones vitamins to Malaysia. 1. They were already there. 2. I thought it was funny. 3. A. It was so laughably easy I took a minor. In a completely unrelated field. Just cause. I graduated with freaking honors. I made the dean's list and crap. All because my cream puff major padded my stats to such a degree. And I guess the general ed classes they made you take. But still. Prospective marketing majors. Minor in it. It's dumb. Do any other thing. Right. Learn accounting. Learn some graphic design. College is expensive as frick. Spend your money wisely. Nobody gives a crap at all about dean's list or honors the day after you graduate. But if you wanna smoke pot and get lit up all the time it's a solid strategy. Don Draper's backstory. Had a professor in college that used the same tests every year and had for several years. All the people who were in fraternities and sororities would have a test from the previous year on file and would pretty much just memorize that. Some would also bring it to class since he usually would leave the room after passing the test out. There were so many people that would only show up to class on test days and they all passed easily. Only kinda cheating. Definitely accused of such. Honors English class would give you some bonus point. Little pieces of paper with a stamp on it. For bringing in obscure words every day and defining them. Kind of cute. Fairly normal. Once enough accumulated there was an extra credit quiz that is free points for everyone. So you know. Win win. Well I'm a gamer and a designer. I saw an exploit and I freaking drilled that crap. I hoarded those M. Two a day. Like wrote. Became habit. Just about every day for the entire year. End of the year. She said I almost got a B if I just do well on the final. Then I turned in 2500 plus points of coupon things. A quiz was about 20 points. A test 100. She freaked out. Tried to nullify it. I argued to the principal that if she reneged on me, she'd have to recalculate the entire class's grades because most of the extra credit quizzes were done entirely because of my work. I got a 334% that year in honors English. That is incredible. Writing papers I just used Google Scholar to find similar papers, then reword what they wrote and copied their sources. If you do that, but with multiple papers condensed into one, you're just writing a normal paper. I realized I had forgotten to do my required community service. 20 hours I think. 
just a couple days before the report was due and so I asked a girl to sign off on hours at the nursing home she worked at. I had another friend read over the essay I wrote about the experience for any plot holes and at the end she looked at me and said okay, you win the golden shovel award, that was the best balls I've ever seen in my life. For the record I ended up doing community service at a nursing home later, just to do it, I'm not anti-community service, I just wasn't very good at managing long deadlines on projects like that. Yeah, I did the same thing. Except I had the guy who worked at our town's TV studio sign me off. Very nice guy and, over my 4 years of high school, I probably did end up doing at least most of the 50 or so hours we needed but I just didn't have any written down. In high school, I'm in college now, I have never cheated in college and never will. It's never worth it, in Spanish class we were given 20 words to memorize weekly and had to spell them correctly on every test. I wrote every word on a small piece of ripped paper and half covered it with my thigh. When the teacher walked by I would close my legs, hiding it, always looking directly down for the entire test facing the desk I could look at the test and the paper without moving my head. I remember telling a couple people about it and it worked flawlessly for them too. Also, I always made sure I purposely misspelled one two words every now and then because that's obvious as frick if I got 100% on every test. This way, if the teacher called me out or asked me something and I didn't know the words at all that would raise red flags. I made dang sure I always got as though. Easy. I was the nicest person possible to everyone in my classes and major. I went to a school that was mostly engineering so the bar for being sociable wasn't that high. The joke was that I was the social butterfly of my department. Kind of like being the tallest midget by I digress. My major was small so I learned everyone's name, where they were from, what they wanted to do. I honestly just started doing it because I was nice but soon began to realize the importance of my networking. If I ever had any problems, I knew I had people to help me. If I was ever late to class or missed it, people covered for me. I would have never made it through 6 years of school, 2 degrees, if I didn't operate like this. This is not a cheat in a way that's against the rules, but no one else in my 6 years in college took the same road as me, so it almost felt like cheating. Man your life can be made so much easier just by being nice to people and that can start now. Even if you're in a large major, learn some names and say hi. Back in elementary school we had to take tests on books we were reading. They were called accelerated reading tests and every book in our library was given a certain amount of points and a level. The level indicated the difficulty and the grade level you should be reading at. Typically the longer the book and the higher the level, the higher the points. Every student was given a login to this website to take the exams and you could take them during any time throughout the day if you had free time. During 3rd through 5th grade I had a goal for points that was around 50-70, so that would be roughly 15 books a semester I'd have to read if I read short chapter books. I found a cheat to the system though. Harry Potter books were worth about 30-40 points. I never read the Harry Potter books, but my classmates were reading them. I would bring my classmates fruit snacks for lunch or other treats and they would end up taking the tests for me while I didn't have to read any books at all. I went my whole 3rd 5th grade career reading no books and reaching my points goal just by paying classmates who were actually reading books to take the tests for me. It's incredible just how far a small bribe like a fruit snack can go. 1. Go to the classroom before the exam. 2. Write all the stuff you have to know on the blackboard. 3. Erase softly so you can still see what was written. 4. Pray god that good students will shut up. 5. 6. Profit. I had a bottle of water, ripped off the label, reprinted the front so it looked genuine. At the back of the sticker where the made in china ETC part is I had all the formulas for my final maths exam. Looked legit. I still failed. The fact that you still failed is hilarious. We bribed our professor once. He was one of my fraternity brother's advisors. So we knew he loved Johnny Walker and was a chain smoker. Four of us pitched together for a carton of reds and a bottle of red label. We all got A's. 1. DOS based class sign up program had a bug where if you put in a fake SSN and dropped a class, an opening would appear in a full class. Got every class I needed when I wanted to take it. 2. My fraternity had a filing cabinet with every test from every professor on campus. They pretty regularly would recycle tests, 
usually on a three-year cycle, made it pretty easy. 3. Slept with two teachers. Teachers were training some student teachers. I had a class in the same classroom. On the board was written simply, training, training. I went Nuru that can't be right. This was a login for a standard teacher account with no restrictions. We were about to complete a whole bunch of tests for a certain level of our education system. I found 5 complete tests with answer sheets, and 3 tests without answer sheets. I had 20 minutes before the first of these tests, I programmed all of the multiple choice answers into my calculator, but still didn't do too well. At this point I had shared this info with two friends and asked for their confidence. One of these friends shared the tests with one of their friends. I was concerned but continued. The next test was the next day, and I had a perfect amount of time to study. I programmed all the answers into my calculator, with some wrong answers built in. I memorized all of the other questions and decided which to get incorrect. I aimed for 65% and got 63%. The other two people in this class with the test answers scored 95% and 100%. We were normally the three lowest scorers in the class. Here's the kicker. This was meant to be a harder test than normal, which I had not realized. The future ducks of the school scored 62%. She flipped out. She couldn't stand coming 1% behind the otherwise worst student in the class. She spent an hour of the teacher's time and argued another 1.5% out of him, so she could beat me, but still failed to beat the other two. There was a fairly large school investigation into this odd occurrence. One of the other guys dropped out anyway, and they suspected me but couldn't connect us to the answers in any way. Afterwards I realized that there was a trap question on the answer sheet, and I walked right into it. If they had seriously investigated me, or looked at the written notes we threw away before the exam, we would have been caught. We got away with it completely, and eventually scored other teachers' passwords. I programmed a fake login screen for our computers that saved the person's password to a directory I could access, and then force restarted the PC, and continued learning from the teacher's answer sheets, albeit maintaining our ranks in the class. Fun times. When I was a senior in high school, I took Spanish 1. I had already taken German I and 2 and had the same teacher for Spanish. One day, about a week before finals, she brought in, and left on her desk, copies of the final. During this time, she was also showing a movie to the class, Das Boot, and was distracted. At one point, and I don't remember when, I snagged a copy of the final. I took it home, filled it out and only gave myself a C because it was all I really deserved. The day of the test, I brought a copy with me in my book bag. Sometime during the final, I switched the one I had with the copy I'd filled out and just drew doodles for the entirety of the test. I got a C. A few years ago in college I was taking a Spanish class, and on one of our test days, it was an online test and the professor wanted us to take it in the computer lab. So we go to the lab, she tells us what website to go to, and I pull it up in Google Chrome. Chrome recognizes that there is text on the page in Spanish, and asks if I would like it to be translated into English. Yes, Google, yes I would, and that's how I cheated without even really trying to. Yes, if you are not cheating you are not trying. All sorts of things, like using my dyslexia to be allowed to do my exams on a computer, then getting round the network restrictions to either Google answers or check cheat sheets I mailed myself or keeping a tiny set of notes inside a mechanical pencil. The biggest cheat I ever did was download a paper from the web, translate it to French on Babelfish, then translate it back to English on Google Translate. The 2x translations was enough to screw a lot of the grammar and sentence structure, which I then went back and rewrite in my own style of writing. Creating a new document with all the same points but enough changes it would not show on a Google search. So I just wanted to make the translation a little clearer for everybody. Go to Google Translate and translate something from English to Spanish. Then take the Spanish translation and translate that to French. Now translate the French back to English again and you can see the difference. Somebody at school was convinced it was better to go German to French but I can't for the life of me remember exactly which one was best. Give it a try. You will probably notice how the language sometimes goes back to being very basic. Quick brown fox runs quickly becomes the quick brown fox runs very fast but you get the idea.
The double translation is an incredibly clever way to encrypt your source. Wow. But the workload seems to almost be the same as just understanding the material. Coming up with your own points. And writing it in my own style of writing. Almost. I suppose that's the key word of this whole thing. Senior year. Each student is required to get at least 10 hours of community service in, in order to graduate. Some students were able to get their hours by tiering. Well. I was part of the leadership for one of our clubs. We really didn't do much at all. We either played games watched movies. ETC. I brought up the point to one of the staff that students can get hours by TOing. They should also be able to get hours by being club leadership. And they approved it. TL. DR. Got community service hours by being leadership for a club that didn't do much at all. Sent corrupted art doc files to the teachers to get some more time for some assignments. Worked like a charm every time. I have to learn how to schedule my time. You have to be careful with how you corrupt the file. Especially if your teacher is a brilliant programmer. This is a renamed zip file. This file is completely empty. A lot of stuff doesn't fly. In HS before video was at all common my Spanish teacher videotaped me craning my neck to steal answers. He stopped class and played it for everyone it was also the day of parent conferences so I was humiliated and scared he would tell my mom. Fast forward 30 years, my friend teaches at our old HS and told me he still plays the tape on the first day of every semester. Had a group project where I had to make a documentary about a Supreme Court case. Simply turned in a blank DV cassette knowing that my teacher wouldn't know how to play it. Got a B and was moved up to AP history the next year. We used cut a piece of paper to fit inside of the slide cover on a scientific calculator with all of the necessary info on it. The hardest part was justifying the need for a calculator in English or history class. They now ban the covers on calculators in exams. It wasn't exactly cheating. I had an appendectomy in high school. So I missed a bunch of exams, which I had to retake. Ost I had to retake during class. One I had to take after my last class as it was the same subject. In that class the teacher reviewed the exam I had missed, discussing what the correct answers were and why. I found it handy, thinking I would get some idea what the exam was like. Afterwards I got to sit the exam. So I get my paper from the teacher and it is the exact same exam he just discussed. He didn't change it. I got everything right and he told me afterwards he was pleased that I did well and really tried. I paid a tutor to take my online stats class for me second half. First half I did great but it got ridiculously hard the second half so I found a tutor on Craigslist and paid him 40 an hour to do my homework and take my tests. Well crap. I would totally do someone's work for 40 an hour. Didn't cheat. But did organize my way through a crushing workload by concentrating my MBA studies on one company. Made it possible to consolidate a lot of effort. Cut down my research burden and drastically increase my expertise on that one outfit. Which at the time, I was working for. It had 100,000 employees and was a conglomerate of diverse companies. Finished the MBA way after I left the outfit. But honestly think restricting my focus to that one company made it possible for me to handle full time school with course overloads and full time work and still manage a good GPA. Made no difference to future employers. All they cared about was the MBA. Anytime I wanted to ditch class in high school, I would show up 15 minutes late. By that time, teachers had already turned attendance into the office. So you would have to go to the office to let them know you actually made it. It was meant to discourage tardiness. However, I would sign in with the office and then take off. Ditching. But the records say you're in class. It was beautiful. I used a keylogger that went between the PC and keyboard to record all the administrator's passwords. Once I had those I had lots of fun. I sold AR. Accelerated reading points to kids that didn't want to read. $1.99 each. Made about $2,500 that semester. Three weeks before I ended up quitting, I erased all of the teacher's directories and deleted all the backups. They had years worth of tests made up, templates and assignments and all that. Cops were called, 
They investigated, but since it was done in between classes and no one seen anyone do it, they never did anything, except threaten to stop everyone from graduating that year if no one ratted me out. You how not to get caught? I never told anyone. My mother was a teacher, so everyone I sold AR points to I just said I used her account, and they believed me. I missed my final exams for high school due to getting glandular fever. I was failing all my classes, badly, but due to my being sick. They had to mark me as the average due to full medical certificates saying I couldn't be there. I comfortably passed all but one subject off the final exams which I missed. I would stare at my textbooks for hours. After a while I would formulate cheat sheets in my head. By the test rolled around I had a few cheat sheets memorized and no one knew. Sneaky bastard. Not sure if it's cheating. But I had to take an FAA certification test at graduation. Out of 1500 questions possible, we would get 100 of them on the test. This was a fully digital test and the exact same questions that we were to study for would be on the test. So, I memorized the order of the answers to each question. Never even looked at the question. I just memorized the order of the answers. Got a 100%. Not exactly cheating but I signed up for a biology class in college I was failing horribly and I went to the professor and I said I'm not doing so well in your classes I want to drop out she said well what's your major? I said my major is computer graphics and she said why are you in this class and biology class is for people that want to become doctors, physicians, physiologists etc. She said it was too late to withdraw so long as I tried my best and attended every class and every lab I would get a passing grade. Back in 10th grade I went to a private school, tie and all, which came in handy. I had biology 2 periods after my friend who would grab me the test. I would take the period before to go to the library look up all the answers on the computer and put the answers in a word doc at size like 6, print it out, cut it to the size and shape of the tie and then staple in the bottom. When I was in the test I would just flip my tie and bam all the answers in order. In math that didn't work though. So I would print out all the equations onto a small piece of paper, fold it in half and then staple it to my jacket near my wrist, shoot the old Spiderman wrist flick and bam there are all the equations in my palm. Now I am thinking my kids are gonna be more McJivery than me. Buddy system to help each other out when one of us didn't finish our homework. The best kind of high school relationship. Bastards held me back in kindergarten. Freaking kindergarten for not being able to spell my last name. It's East European. 12 characters long, and only 3 vowels. Not being able to recite my home address and phone number. Military brat. I lived at 5 other addresses before this one, and I was only 5, with an at the time undiagnosed hearing issue on top of everything. Thankfully, my dear mother is a teacher, so when I wasn't in class, she was tutoring me, just to stick it to the suckers. I tested out of 3rd grade. But my 4th grade teacher didn't take too kindly to that, so I switched schools on top of it all. This was a private school, so I ended up going over to their rival school just to spite them. Freshman year of HS. I had a history teacher who would give multiple choice tests, and you had to use your own paper. She would go over the tests the next day, and she had a policy where if you didn't like the grade you got, you could come in after school in a day or two and retake it. She used the exact same test for the Ray test. I only ever studied for one test, so I wouldn't raise suspicion. Got an A on it the first try. The rest of the tests, I didn't bother studying and just exploited her retest policy. One time, I went to the retest with the answers written on the inside of a finger. One time, I wrote out the answers ahead of time. Went to the retest and just doodled for a while before pulling a switch. Easiest A I ever got. I had a friend who was sick during a chem test. Well we went over it when he got back so the teacher told him to leave the room. He left his hoodie along with his iPod recording inside. He got a 100 and I thought it was hilarious. At my high school, all of the personal computers that were given are connected to the same network and we're all given school Google Docs accounts. Well, about a couple years ago someone figured out that any documents created by students on their school account could be accessed by limiting the search to the entire school network. 
Most people will just copy and paste an entire essay written by a student 3 or 4 years ago, write their name on it and give it to the teacher as it is. As brilliant as this sounds, I know people that haven't written an original essay since freshman year. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.